wonder if the test for yourself to see if you are officially old is when you feel a great sense of joy of having a clean house. <laughs> Specifically during the spring. Yeah. Spring cleaning is pretty satisfying. Especially the garage. And like, the yard for you. Oh, yeah. I mean. Yeah. I am a father. Mm -hmm. So. But garage cleaning is a whole nother world of just satisfaction. <laughs> <laughs> There's a feeling of reverence when the whole garage is cleaned out of all its crap from the winter and the fall. And I don't know. It's like you, you want to be in there all the time. <laughs> well, you're like that anytime we make any improvement to the house. You just want to stand there and stare at it like you come in the room just to see the new shelf that you put up or yeah. something. <laughs> Even if it's it's, it's uh, an incremental improvement. Yeah, minor things I give see us it. great joy. <laughs> so, hey, welcome to While She's Napping. I am Adam. And I'm Cindy. I wonder how many people started a podcast as a result of my shitty advice last week. I don't think it was shitty advice. I don't know. I never consider my advice to, advice to be good advice. Yeah, but it you learn from your own experience and mistakes and... I think that's valuable for people to hear yeah, without having to go so. through their own trial and error. We should have noted this last week, but uh, we got another five-star review, and we really appreciate that, um, I don't know, the, the, the positive reinforcement, the, the kind words, and specifically, we enjoy going on walks with people if it's through their <laughs> ear holes from yep. audio. We we are happy to keep you entertained during your walks, and apparently we extend the walk. Right. <laughs> this person takes the long route to listen to us. Yeah, to finish out the episode in one, one session. Yeah. So there you go. We appreciate that. And on that note, um, if you're listening to us for the first time, we welcome you to the show. Today, we're going to talk about the controversial topic of a vaccine passport. Um, if you've listened to any of our episodes before, I'm sure you know where we lean on this, but it is a, a good time to talk about this, um, specifically because people are starting to get vaccinated and it's becoming a hot button issue amongst the uh, conspiracy theorists and people that are paranoid. About yeah, it. but that being said, I do think, uh, yeah, I agree that most people who have been listening to us for a while or who know us um can you know assume where we fall in this but i think part of the reason i wanted to talk about it is because it's not even though i sort of have my natural tendency for how i feel about it um it's not something i have extremely strong feelings about because i've come across some considerations and some other things that i hadn't really talked uh, hadn't thought about at first and so i do think there are some legitimate concerns um about this there are others that i think are paranoid and ridiculous and kind of going down the conspiracy theory you know holes but um yeah that's why i thought this would be a good time to talk about it yeah it's it's current so uh we hope you enjoy the episode and if you haven't already please subscribe to the show again we are a weekly podcast we come into your feeds <laughs> every monday morning <laughs> uh bright and early First thing, so you get a nice little jolt of energy from us to start your week. And uh, we appreciate it. We appreciate the downloads. We appreciate the shares. We're on all your podcatchers and YouTube. Uh, not video, but if you like to consume your audio on YouTube, we are there. Um, so l let's just jump right in. We can get into the socials and stuff later on. But okay. Let's just jump right in because I have a feeling this is going to be a long show. Um or rather, a show full of information. Well, we only have till the end of our nap. So. Yeah. <laughs> Hence the name. Yep. <laughs> um, so, as far as I understand it, as of today, uh, by the time this is in people's feeds, it will be April 12th. So, as of April 12th, predicting the future here, the government, the federal government of the United States has no intentions on making this sort of a law or anything to say in order to do X, whatever X is, 
you need to be vaccinated, correct? As far as I know, yeah. The Biden administration has made it pretty clear that they don't intend to have this be a federally regulated thing at all. Um, And it would be something that is implemented at a more local level or by individual businesses or venues or whatever to decide how they want to go about requiring either proof of vaccine, whether that's with this digital sort of vaccine passport um, or health credential, I've also heard it called, um, or showing your physical vaccine card um, or showing proof of a negative test. I feel like it's one way or another. It's just to show that you aren't, um, you know, posing a serious risk to the other people in the public place. But, but that's that can't my understanding. be done across the board, right? So it can't be one of those options to do whatever you want. In other words, you can't bring, if there was a concert and say Live Nation said, only those with proof of vaccination are allowed to go um, or to attend because it's a large gathering. I don't know that the negative test would cut that, right? You, you That's easily forgeable and it's very uh, fallible. Right. I've been wondering that too. Even I was thinking about it when we were watching, catching up on some of our TV shows last night. It's the, um, should I mention what it is? The series? Care. Yeah. Ahead. The Chicago series. Um, med and fire and pd and all that um but they are so inconsistent with how they show people wearing masks (laughs) especially on med it's like in a hospital because you gotta hear that i understand but gray's anatomy has been doing their whole show with people in um n95s but anyway they often i feel like they try to address that by saying like oh they when they're bringing a patient in they say oh they they tested negative for covid and that's sort of like how they excuse people not wearing masks during the show um, but every time I hear that, I'm like, OK, but we always hear a negative test isn't necessarily you can't yeah. rely on it if the person wasn't quarantining leading up to the test. And if they like depending on when their last potential sure. contact was. Um, so I struggle with that, too. How proof of a negative test without quarantine and without understanding the timing of the test, um, how that really tells you anything. I don't want to sidetrack too much, um, but from my understanding, though. When it comes to privately owned businesses, um, I, I, I don't see this vaccine passport being implemented anywhere other than large gatherings outside of maybe the grocery store, right? I don't think the grocery store is going to be able to say to its customers, hey, we need proof of vaccine or vaccination status in order for you to shop here. First of all, that would be lucratively terrible for them. In other words, they're not going to make money. They're they're turning away customers um, where they're... I, I you just, could say that about any... It's an essential thing. Yes. You yes. know, so having... I think at worst what they could do, or at best rather, is saying, hey, if you can show us proof of vaccination, you don't have to walk around with the mask. If you don't have proof of vaccination, you have to wear a mask. I don't even think that's where it's going about who can come into a place but wear a mask or not wear a mask. I think mask wearing is going to be here until we basically reach herd immunity. But that's also not going to be done on a large scale all at once. It's not like one day we're going to wake up and the whole country or the whole world has reached herd immunity. Um, So I think that's going to happen on a local scale. But I think once a certain community, whether it's a city or a town or a state or whatever, um, has reached that level of herd immunity where we don't have the community spread that puts even unvaccinated people at high risk, um, then we'll start to get back to the actual normal of people not having to wear masks, whether you're vaccinated sure. or not. Um, my interpretation is that it's being able to attend things, not essential services, but other things. Yeah, like concerts and stuff like that. And travel. I don't see an issue with this. Where is the issue? with people being upset about saying about needing proof of vaccination. What no one's denying that they can I, I think when it comes to travel specifically, like on a plane, I don't think the airlines would turn them away. I think what they would do is saying if you don't have proof of vaccination, you have to wear a mask. Right? Whereas on a cruise, I can see the cruise line saying if you don't have proof of vaccination, you can't come on here. Because yeah. you're essentially living there. Right. And then that's putting the whole, the crew and everybody on the ship at risk. But I feel like 
there are already certain places where you can travel or you where you need to show proof of a vaccine or something. Um, I remember when I traveled to Costa Rica, I had to get vaccinated for, I think, hepatitis. I don't remember. One of the hepatitises. I had to get um, vaccinated for rabies because I was going to be working with mammals, but that was a very specific thing. Um, but that's I, malaria. I had to get vaccinated for malaria or take a treatment. I can't remember what it was. Maybe it was that I had to take a treatment when I got back. I, I can't remember but exactly what it was. But my point is there are certain requirements around public health for travel that have been existence for a long time. But that's intercontinental travel. We're talking about domestic travel, right? Those rules don't apply to domestic travel airlines. No, because those diseases are specific to certain parts of the world or certain countries or certain areas. And But most people that are traveling are doing it domestically. Right. But my point is that, yes, the reason why we don't have to deal with those diseases w- with domestic travel is because they don't incur- occur in any other part of our country. But COVID does. And it's it's a global disease that could be anywhere, no matter where you're traveling, whether you're just crossing state lines, even within the U.S. Um, that's why you don't have to worry about those diseases because they're not where you'd be no, no, traveling no. to. I'm, I'm not I'm not discounting that. I'm saying people when you have to get vaccinated to go to a different continent or country or whatever, mm-hmm. people are saying, OK, I understand this. I get right? it. And it's rare to go to those places for the layman, for the average person. Sure. It's le- it's rare to do that. Whereas domestic travel, we've never had these requirements before. So to have people say, hey, in order to go to, I don't know, California, you have to be vaccinated for COVID on this flight. Because we've never had a disease like COVID. I I get it. But I can see why people would say, what the fuck? Yes. I get it. But my point is, I think when it comes to domestic travel on planes, I think what they're going to do is say either mask or or proof of vaccination, because it's still only a finite amount of time. It's only a a relatively short amount of time on a plane compared to things like traveling on a cruise, right? Because you're living there. So, But it's not just the time that you're on the plane. It's then once you arrive at your destination and now say the community where you're traveling to or the state where you're traveling to is has COVID pretty well controlled or whatever, like if it's different from where you're coming from. Uh Then you're in that community and that's you're, not the airline's responsibility. I didn't say it was, but I'm saying these are the types of issues that we're concerned about because you don't. The reason why you get vaccinated or tested for other diseases when you're traveling internationally isn't so that you don't spread it on the plane. I mean, that's part of yeah, it. Yeah, I'm so sure, you don't bring it. So you don't bring it or you bring it back home with you from wherever you traveled. So what's to stop someone from driving? You know, like some someone could say, I'm going to drive cross country to California. And I don't know. I'm not saying I have the answers. I'm saying I understand where some of these concerns come from. Okay. So realistically, then, where do you think this is going to go? Where do you think this is going? Because as we've already mentioned, the government isn't going to implement this. I don't know how many private businesses outside of the entertainment industry and maybe airlines are going to implement this. I, I Outside of that, I don't know what the big deal is here. I don't either because... I just don't understand how this is a violation of freedoms. Right. So I don't get that either. That's the of all of the. So I've been thinking about the concerns that I've read about and heard about in like three different main bins, I guess, which was the um, people's freedom. Like just I shouldn't have to. Yeah, I shouldn't have to because you can't tell me what to do. Um, Yeah. data security people having concerns over the digital version of the vaccine passport to have their medical information like uh, you know potential security risk um and then the third one was vaccine equity about like there are some communities who don't have or some people who just don't have the same access to the vaccines as other people and it could create this really serious divide between you know wealthy people who, who have the ability to travel and easily access a vaccine versus someone who doesn't who can't get on a computer to enroll and can't doesn't have a car to get to the clinic whatever the case may be um that now the wealthy people who have ready access to vaccines and medical care now get all these other benefits okay so we can talk about that i think that's no a- i want to start with that one you do because okay. i think that one is the least in my opinion, and maybe this is the privilege in me, this is the one that I think is the least 
uh, difficult to overcome. Oh, I'm the I'm complete opposite. Well, I thought that why. was the <laughs> no, most def- complex one. No way. The data security definitely is because that is a, a legit um, thing. Data uh, yes, security but I have a lot of arguments a thing. for why that shouldn't why that's not that big of a deal. But okay, no, no, go no. ahead. You have arguments to pinpoint how people are being hypocritical about it. Sure. It doesn't necessarily mean data security isn't a big deal. I never said it wasn't a big deal. I just think the equity issue is more complex in my mind. So here's why I I don't necessarily think that's a huge issue. I'm not saying it's a non-issue. Everybody has access to this vaccine in particular. It's free for everyone. Okay, so it doesn't cost them money to physically get the shot in their arm. Yes. Yes. And most people if not all, have access to make an appointment or have someone else do it for them. Right. But it's more difficult for some people than others. I'm not saying it is or isn't. I'm saying to overcome that is easier than data security. For an individual person. But I'm saying when you're speaking on a community level, you're talking about an entire demographic of people or entire communities, low-income communities who maybe don't have smartphones or don't have internet access who have to go to a library to sign up like and if they don't have a car they have to use public transportation put themselves at increased risk of catching covid just to get the same thing that we could we easily just signed in on our iphone to go to cvs and get a vaccine i get it so there's the inequity no i'm not saying these things don't exist i'm saying they're they're more they're data security is far more insurmountable than those challenges that you just laid out. All right. I guess we don't have to say which one is a bigger deal or which one is more challenging. I guess what I'm saying is with the data security, I kind of get to the point where I'm like, okay, yes, that's a legitimate concern, but we also put our information and our data on in online forms, in apps, in whatever. Like I, my medical records are all right. Like if you think your medical records aren't already digitized, like... What do you I think th- there the, <laughs> of the course fear they are. of this is that it's going hold on before we get into the data thing. Okay. I'm saying it is as far as I know most people have access to the internet. That's not to say there are people that do. I'm saying most people have access to some sort of internet device. Correct, but the ones that don't is because of long-standing inequities. In- I'm not saying <laughs> so- these things don't exist. I'm saying it's there's a good chance that those people that don't have access know someone that does. Okay, I, this is a very privileged and sort of ignorant take. So, I, I, I don't know that there are people that don't have a phone and don't have the internet that aren't homeless. Okay, so there are a lot of people, they've been talking about this a lot in terms of students working, doing distance learning and the inequities that have come from that because some students don't have as, they don't have um, ready internet access or they don't have have internet that's as fast. I don't know every person's particular situation. I'm saying this is an issue, like a documented issue. This is a side argument. I'm not saying, I'm saying most people either have the internet or have the phone or both. Most people have at least access to a phone. And if you at least have access to a phone, you can at least call the department How did of you health. know the number to call? I'm saying you, you find know it? someone that... <laughs> if, on the internet. <laughs> most people have basic cable that's free. <laughs> Okay, I'm just saying like you keep saying all these extra steps, these people, and that's my exact point. Free- I'm not saying that they can't get it. I'm not saying all right. we're, they will. We're no, 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 we're, we're not. Rambling. This is the point. This is the issue. It's not that they can't get the vaccine. It's that it is. It's going to take much more effort. They may have to take time out of work if they don't work yes, salary jobs. Yes, they yes. lose their money that way. They have to. Um, like I said, maybe take public transportation and put themselves at increased risk of COVID just yep. to get the vaccine. So those are all inequities in and of themselves. Yes, I'm not saying these things don't exist. I'm saying they are less insurmountable than data security, which we can get yeah, into. In your brain, like we can think of solutions, but I'm saying for that person, that might not feel very insurmountable. Okay, fine. But at least the data security thing, whether you want to think it's legit or not, That's beyond your control. Yes, yes, you're right. It's completely out of your control. Yeah, You cannot find ways around that. I agree with you. I think on an individual basis, like there are obvious or theoretical solutions to overcoming these inequities and the challenges and the barriers. 
they're harder to do in person. I think it's hard to implement for each individual. Um, but yes, even on a conceptual basis, thinking about your data security online and or in an app or whatever is a problem that we don't have any solutions right. to at this point. But the thing is, I wonder how much of that... So when when you signed up, you didn't have to put in your social. What is it? What private... You mean to sign up for the vaccine? Yeah. Right, but the... No, but the, um, the fact of whether or not you have the vaccine is protected health information. No, 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 it's not what I'm saying. Itself. I'm saying if there's a data hack, uh-huh. if we have to upload our vaccine passports to have it digitized right. so we can go enjoy luxuries, what are they worried, they being those that do, are worried about data hacking, what are they worried about the hacking of? I don't know. That's a good question because you, uh, you're right. I don't there's think... There's no bank information. There's no social security number. There's no... No, but it would have... So it's the same reason why... You, people are being recommended not to post a picture of your vaccine card when you get it. People are posting that on social media and it contains pieces of personally identifiable information, PII. Like what? Your name, your birth date, where you got vaccinated, what vaccine you got. That's all. It's your health records. It's it's protected But the bottom under HIPAA. line of a hack is to get money. It's to scam you. I know. So I don't know all the inner workings, but I'm saying every piece of information that a hacker gets about a person so they get your name, they get your birth date from the picture of your vaccination card. If they find out your address from somewhere else or a credit card number, whatever the case might be, I'm saying like there's multiple sources of information. So the point is you're putting personal protected information on a platform that could be vulnerable. I guess I, I, I don't have those concerns, specifically if it's outside of the federal government. If there is a privatized company like Google that's going to be in charge of this, I trust that 100% because Google, as far as I'm concerned, is fucking unhackable. I don't, I cannot remember a time where there was a Google data breach. That's not to say it's never happened. Right, I think it's just a matter of time if it but hasn't it happened is, yet. They are so good at keeping their shit secure. Whereas like Yahoo, uh, Facebook, maybe even Twitter, um, those social medias and those antiquated uh, email systems or mm-hmm. platforms are very hackable and they've been hacked because right? they don't keep up yet yeah, the right. hackers get ahead Google, of the technology google is constantly on top of it yeah yeah so if the federal government was saying to google hey we'll work in conjunction with you obviously there's going to be yeah, but know. the government's not going to be in control of this system i mean the passport it, system no, no, no. They're not going to be control in control of it. But right now, they can join Google to say, hey, we are you database? to make this database. Maybe. I don't even think the federal government's going there. But I know what you're saying. I just feel like for me, like my all my medical records, like I, everything is online. Like you, I have an app for my doctor right. where they post my lab results. They send me appointment reminders. Like I get text messages for, so why isn't from the pharmacy. So why isn't hacking that now? It, it Maybe they have. Maybe it will happen in a matter of time. I'm saying the point is, I feel like people don't question it. Like when you have CVS, the CVS app or whatever, and CVS is texting you about your prescription refill. And like that's all medical records. And we have it in our pocket on our phones all the time. And I don't see how that's so different from the vaccine passport. I think the buzzword is because it's COVID. Yeah. I think it's because it's a COVID-related thing, therefore it's corrupt, or therefore there's something behind it and people want you or something. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I don't think, that's why I was saying the whole like freedom thing, this is kind of related to the data thing, um, is the least legitimate concern from my perspective. We can transition into that. Yeah, I just feel like... From so far, from my experience hearing, and again, this is mostly just like on social media or just hearing bits and pieces from people, the argument for not wanting to have this vaccine passport um, or not participate or not get vaccinated at all is because they just don't want to be told what to do, not because they have a legitimate concern about their data security. Even if they say that, it's like like the questions you just asked. What are you worried about? What information do you think is going to be compromised? And what do you think the consequences could be of this digital passport and they don't have an answer it's just because i, I just it. don't want to right which not to and say you that can that's totally not li- want to you're right not to say that's totally illegitimate like you have a choice you have a freedom but when it comes to public health 
there's a reason for it that's bigger than you. Well, what bothers me is you can say this goes against my freedoms and liberty. I don't want to participate. Okay, then you know, I'm sorry. There are things then that you can't do. It's like with, with private schools or I don't even know if public schools do, do this. I've never been to a, a public school, but I do know that our daughter's daycare requires some sort yeah. of vaccine. And I'm sure COVID. Public schools. That's yeah, they okay. do. I I don't know because um, there are yeah. more obviously uh, a broader spectrum of uh, religious participations in public schools compared to like a Catholic school. Most people right there's there are exemptions, Catholic. but it varies state to state. Sure. So I, I guess what I'm saying is no one complains when we have well, maybe they do. It's just not as loud when we have to send our daughter to daycare. No one's saying, well, why should I have to have my child participate in the flu shot? It's yeah, you got to have a flu shot to. Right, here. if you don't prove that your child has been is up to date on their vaccines, they can't attend the school. Right. That's and the school's policy to protect everybody there. If the we have going back to the private businesses or, you know, large gatherings like concerts and sporting events, which I think are the two biggest right. ones that are gonna be, you know, either pushing this or not, mm-hmm. saying, Hey, in order to watch this football game, you have to show proof of vaccination. If someone says, Yo, that's against my freedoms, the the private business owner, being the football team owner, can say, Actually, I have the right to do what I want because I have the freedom to, to do what service. I want yeah. to have whether or not I want people to come into my stadium or not. Mm-hmm. And if you don't like it, sorry. So, yes, you cannot get vaccinated. You have that right. You have that freedom. But don't expect to enjoy the same luxuries that people that are vaccinated are going to be able to enjoy. Sure. So the thing that comes up for me with that is how do you differentiate between the people who could get vaccinated who don't have any barriers they don't have any underlying like autoimmune disease or anything that for any reason they can't get back that's the point of like we use the daycare example all children over a certain age i think it's six months must be vaccinated show proof of vaccination for the flu and oftentimes a super common anti-vax argument is well if your vaccines work so well why do you care if my kid's not vaccinated because your kids are protected if they got their vaccine. My unvaccinated kid can't give it to yours. But the whole point of that is that there are certain members in our population who are vulnerable who can't get vaccinated. Um, for example, young, very young children, babies under six months old, don't get the flu shot. And there are children that age at the daycare who would be vulnerable. So if a three-year-old comes in with the flu and gives it to a three-month-old, that's the problem. Right. So um, I struggle with the... Until we reach herd immunity. This all assumes prior to herd immunity. Right. Everything that I just said about the football stadium and whatnot. Exactly. So until we get there, how do you differentiate between people who um, can't get the vaccine, who don't have a choice? um, Because those are the types of people that we want to protect by having the rest of the population vaccinated. So if someone who can't get the vaccine shows up to a football game and they're like, no, I don't have a vaccine passport because I'm not eligible or I can't receive the vaccine. Why should I be discriminated and not right. allowed? So my knee-jerk reaction to that is twofold. One, if if we have not reached herd immunity yet, why the fuck do you want to go to something like that to begin with? And if you are <sighs> severely immunocompromised, why do you want to be in that large of a crowd anyway? First of all. Second of all, it's terrible to say, but... I'm sorry, I know it's unfair, but that's just, we have to look out for the greatest amount of good for the greatest amount of people. And unfortunately, immunocompromised people are not the greatest amount of people. The greatest amount of people, are, especially with a private entity, the bottom line is making money. The, that's the bottom line. It's not to look out for individual you know, uh, experiences. It's not to look out for the well-being of the individual. When it comes to a, specifically a football game, all they give a fuck about is making money. And if that's the case, I'm sorry, the greatest money coming in are those that are vaccinated. I'm sorry. No, I, I get that. I mean, I know that's the bottom line for these private companies who would be making these decisions. It's just every time I get to that point, that's where I struggle. And one of the um, 
one of the things I had read up on, which I had never thought of either, is with um, pregnant women because the guidance has been unclear up until now. I think it's pretty clear now, but it's been developing super fast and there's not really, there hasn't been hard evidence for, like the CDC isn't saying, yes, pregnant women get the vaccine. And even healthcare providers haven't been saying that. They're saying, we we'll support you either way. It's your decision. Well, didn't the CDC say there's no evidence that it's harmful? Correct. But okay. they wouldn't say, we can't say with 100% right, right, right. certainty that there won't be any side effects because we haven't been, it hasn't been studied for long enough. Right. Um, and like I said, I think it's coming around to now more and more saying, yes, you should get it. The benefits outweigh the risk. Um, but then I'm thinking like, OK, so in if because that was such a, a like a wishy washy thing and there weren't clear guidelines, you're really going to hold it against someone if a pregnant woman goes somewhere and like she can't. I'm sorry, you can, it, just can't. I know it sucks, but you can't participate. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. If you choose not to get vaccinated, it comes now with specifically now with this understanding that this is going to happen. And for pregnant women, it's you. I, I'm not saying it's an easy decision. I'm not. I'm just saying you have to sort of have a risk benefit analysis with if you're apprehensive about getting the vaccine because you're worried about what it's going to do with two rather your unborn child completely understand that apprehension i don't think that's outrageous at all i think that's i i think it'd be weird if people are like i don't give a fuck i'm still gonna get it right it's it's natural to wonder Ooh, is this going to have any side effects on well, my yeah you want to make board? an informed decision of course yeah. and I, I get that but if you say okay my informed decision is leading me not to get the vaccine i think at this point you are doing that under the understanding of saying okay, then you can't participate in these things as well. I'm sorry. That's just the way it is. I know it sucks, but I'm sorry because we, we, can't, we can't guarantee that you're going to be safe in this environment, right? Because the, there is still a chance that if you, even if you're vaccinated, you could pass it on. There's a chance. Very small chance. It's a very small chance. But if that pregnant woman, if the if the football stadium was like, all right, fuck it, let everyone in, and the pregnant woman came in and got COVID, now the football stadium is liable because you got COVID in their environment, in their place. So what about, is there any discussion of a waiver of liability? I don't know. If you're not vaccinated and you don't, you can't prove... I mean, that'd be a good idea, but I don't know. And you it might... would protect the company. And then right. the person is really uh, they're saying I'm absorbing this risk. But just if the there's comp- other immunocompromised people exactly. there and then yeah. you give it to them. Yeah. yeah. And but then they would have also had to sign the waiver. Th- yes, <laughs> I understand. But I think they it, even though it's a small chance, they don't want to risk another even if it's a mini outbreak. Yeah. It, but that's just, to be expected. I feel like even after we reach, her, reach herd immunity, there are going to be local outbreaks. It's going to happen. Just yeah, like but there it's not going to be in a, in a space like a football stadium, right? No, it's it would be to, like in a community. Yeah. Well, that's how it has been with like um, with measles, you that's know, over I'm the saying. last like 20 years or whatever. It's always in pockets of communities yeah. of people that are willingly unvaccinated yeah. or unwillingly but mm-hmm. most of the time it's those that are anti-vax people yeah um here in america i'm sure in underprivileged co- countries it's different but yeah um yeah i'm sorry that's just that's the breaks and i i know it's easy for me to say because i'm a guy that's not pregnant and fully intended on getting well i think vaccinated. that's part of the 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 thing is that it's just another like form of inequity that I wouldn't call only it women will have to d- I, I, would, I didn't I said yeah, inequity did. you did you said why am I being discriminated against I you're well I was saying specifically about like immunocompromised people but pregnancy and or your your sex your being a, a woman is a protected class that you can't discriminate against someone because of their gender because of their status of child that's not <laughs> what they're doing they're, it's, it's could, vaccination status I understand, but it's connected to the fact that they are a pregnant woman. And so men will never experience that. But it's just men another that are layer. not vaccinated will. In but that's this by scenario. choice. Yes, yes, yes. I get, <laughs> that's I just get because they want their freedom. I hear what you're saying. I'm saying it's easier for the privatized company to just across the board. I, I get it. I'm make saying exceptions. It, I understand. I just, I'm just saying it blurs lines with some other protected things okay. that you normally can't, that, you know, you can't do that with. Let's take a pause here Mm -hmm. on the other side. 
we'll continue the conversation to see if there's any way that we can mend these fences here. <laughs> okay. Hang tight. We really didn't like divvy that up very much. (laughs) We kind of just touched a little bit on each of the three sort of categories that. So what would you like to to cover? Uh, Um, I don't know. (laughs) I I feel like those were like we kind of glazed the surface of all three of them. So are there what are what aspects do you think we should dive into further? I just want to get into you know. The reasons why, I guess, at this point, now knowing that there's going to be probably a, a vaccine passport thing, I want. Uh, first of all, do you think that's even going to fly legally? Because you have places like Florida that are already having lawsuits against it because it's a violation of freedom, quote unquote. Do you think that this is going to be enacted without consequence? Yes. Because there's legal precedent. We talked about this in our anti-vax episode. um, And it went back to a case that from Massachusetts. I don't even remember when it was. But we did cover the brief history of the initial uh, case in court. But wasn't it the government ruling it? Wasn't it the government requiring that vaccine in that case? I believe so. But I think... um, I think it's the same reason why pretty much every case has been upheld with people trying to fight against having to prove vaccination for their children to attend a school or something else. Um, I think in most, if not all, of the cases since that original one, um, they've been upheld because the courts concluded that public health is wins over your personal decision. And if you don't want to get vaccinated, that's fine, but there are certain... Yeah, like you said, like there are trade-offs to that because you can't your personal decision doesn't allow you to then put other people at risk. I just wonder I think there's a good chance that this is going to be challenged at least by like a it will be a civil suit, right? Um among citizens at, in all 50 states and it's going to be so tied up in litigation that by then we're going to hit herd immunity. Because what is the estimate for herd immunity right now? October, November, they're saying there's a possibility that will happen. Well, like I said, I feel like it's going to be localized. It's not going to be all at once. I'm saying until in the general, United States reaches herd immunity, I think they were banking yeah. on or estimating the November. End of this year. Yeah, but right. that also assumes that everybody who is eligible for a vaccine is going to get it and that they're able to start getting kids vaccinated. Right. So you figure most states will have it 16 plus by mid-May. By Um, mid-May, everybody will be... I think it's May 1st. Okay. So let's just say May 1st. So we'll call two weeks after that and the difficulties of getting... uh, appointment schedule we'll say by june so by june there's a good chance that the majority of people in america 16 plus that are able to get vaccinated would have that doesn't mean they are they either opted out or opted in by june june 1st we should know Mm -hmm. okay that means they have five months at that point, because again, we said November, we're banking on herd immunity. June is when we think, okay, let's go. In June, that's when you can see baseball stadiums, uh, large gatherings, concerts saying, okay, vaccine passport, here we go. In order to do this, you have to have a vaccine passport. And then it's challenged. That, that means that cannot be enacted if it's challenged in court. 
right? If it's challenged in court, I don't think that the baseball stadiums can continue to say, in order to come here, you have to be vaccinated. Oh, you mean like if the litigation is pending? Yes. I don't know. I don't think just because someone sues you, you automatically have to stop what you're doing, unless the court orders that. The court could say you cannot require vaccine passports until this litigation is complete. Because if this reaches the Supreme Court, which I would assume it will, it's going it I don't know how some states are going to say vaccine passports and some won't. Right. Because well, I can I, totally see a place like Florida being like, fuck it. No, I think that is what's going to happen because the federal government has said we're going to we're not getting involved. Like this is out of our we're not going to be in control of a national vaccine passport system. But once lawsuits happen and it goes to the Supreme Court, the federal government is involved. No, that's oh, just no, the Supreme that, Court yeah, making yeah, the decision. Right, right. That doesn't mean that the federal government would be involved in so, controlling it. Let's just say it, it in Florida, they some places, I don't know, the, the the Tampa Bay Rays or whatever saying, hey, in order to come here, you have to be vaccinated. And that's challenged. Right. And it goes all the way up to the Supreme Court and the Supreme Court says, actually, this is unconstitutional or constitutional, whatever. You yeah, can, I don't think that's going to happen. You can't. I think it will. No, I, I think I think that, this, like I said, there unless there are new arguments made that are unique from all the arguments that have been made in the last hundred years about vaccine, sure. anti-vax arguments and personal freedoms versus public health. There is no other precedent. The precedent has been pretty set in stone and upheld for many years that public health wins over Fine. personal choice. Then let's say the Supreme Court supports that and says, actually, Florida, you're wrong. You have to, this whole vaccine passport is legit. Mm-hmm. Why would they change their ruling for any of the other I don't think 49s? They will. So it will become enacted across the country. They're not going to mandate them to do it. I'm saying, but if a state or an entity within a certain state decides to use vaccine passports to determine who can come into their business. But the states aren't. The businesses are. I know. And so I'm saying, but I'm saying just because the Supreme Court upholds all, if they uphold all the challenges against that, that doesn't mandate other people to do it. It just means if they do and they're challenged, they're going to lose. So it's, it's a, unspoken mandate right because you can challenge this yeah. but you're going to lose right? just like right but that hasn't stopped the anti-vaxxers in the last few decades who have continued to challenge it and bring it to court about their kids not being able to attend a certain school or whatever without a vaccine they keep doing it but the court is pretty con- and i if there's anyone out there any attorneys or anyone who's yeah, yeah. more well versed in this let us know but my understanding is that it's been pretty consistent but my at this point, it's just easier just to get vaccinated, yeah. right? <laughs> to, I just don't understand the logic behind this because you see anti-vaxxers that are saying, oh, it's no, no worse than the flu. Oh, the whole 99.3% survival rate. Oh, those are bad odds. When And they're tongue in cheek saying mm-hmm. that about COVID saying, why are we doing this when the survival rate is so high? Okay, if that is going to be your argument as to whether or not to do something, right? You're saying, look, I don't mind running the risk of getting COVID because the survival rate is so high. More than likely, I'm going to be fine. And I could say, hey, I don't mind getting vaccinated because the survival rate is so fucking high. It's actually higher than getting COVID. So I'm pretty good there. And I feel like people are like, I've heard the argument of, well, the vaccine has only been around for, you know, a year or whatever That's what less saying. than a year so we don't know what side effects they're going to have 10 15 30 years from now like well covid has only been around for a year and we don't you don't know what your long term side effects are going to be even if you're a young healthy person now and you catch covid you don't know if it's going to have long term i mean we've heard of covid long haulers i mean yeah, but and that's still only a matter of months since yeah. the infection but i'm saying why is that argument not valid for the disease itself when there's way more evidence that there aren't long-term effects of vaccines. Like of all the vaccines that we have, they watch for side effects for like 60 to 90 days. Like that's the, t- that's the time frame for when there could potentially be an adverse effect or you most reactions are immediate, like an allergic reaction to something in a vaccine. But there's no such thing. Like there have been so many vaccines that have been around for a long time that they don't expect <laughs> long-term effects from vaccines. But public health professionals and you know medical professionals are saying we really legitimately don't know what the long-term impacts of covid are 
even if you have an asymptomatic. COVID, not the vaccine. That's my point. I'm saying, why are they willing to take the gamble with COVID when medical experts are saying we have no idea what the long term effects might be? But for but they're not willing to take the, the quote unquote gamble with the vaccine when medical experts are saying we literally have no reason to think that there would be long term effects of this vaccine. Yeah. And aren't all vaccines at some point new? Right. It, anything yes. <laughs> that I don't know, the polio or the measles, the mumps or whatever, the vaccines that you're getting, the Tdap, at some point that was new. Right. Right. <laughs> and they use science to study its effectiveness and safety. Right. And I guess, I don't know, for me, it, that is the disconnect here is that if you enjoy these luxuries so much, going to concerts, going on cruises, going to, to ball games or sporting events or whatever, it's in your best interest. To get vaccinated. Right. Unless you have a legitimate reason that you've talked yeah, yeah, about yeah. with your I'm, doctor. I'm talking about people that just refuse to get the yes, vaccine. Yes, just for no good reason. I'm, yeah. I'm I'm not saying these those types of people that aren't able to be vaccinated aren't important. They're just not the majority. Right. Most people are able to be vaccinated. And they don't really have a choice to make in the matter. Yeah. And yeah. I'm just talking about the people that are, oh, my freedoms. Yeah. Yeah. I, it's in your best interest to be vaccinated. And I guess their hurdle to get over is they're saying, well, someone is telling me what to do. Right. I'm not able to make that free choice. But I'm saying, dude, it, I don't know what to tell you. If if you wanted to do anything and you were hacking up along and you had the flu, people would be like, you got to fucking go, bro. You can't be here. Try going to work L legit with the flu. Legit. Like, especially if you work in food service They'd or something. They'd say, get the yeah. fuck out of here. Right. And you can't, oh, my freedoms. Right. <laughs> my freedom. You can't do that. People <laughs> would say, get out. You are you are a risk to our establishment and mm -hmm. our patrons here. You have to go. And we enjoy a lot of freedoms now because other diseases have been eradicated thanks to vaccines. Like, you don't have to go around worrying about catching a lot of those things. And you don't have to worry about your kid getting sick. Like, especially if you have a very young child, an infant who can't be vaccinated, you know. Don't don't <laughs> the teachers and shit send children home that look sick? Yeah. Yeah. So where are the parents? Oh, my freedoms. My child's freedoms. He can't. He or she can't learn here. No, could your child sick. Yeah. We can send that person home. Yeah. This that is denying them, quote right, but unquote, they'll say a service. But they'll say it's because they have symptoms. They're obviously a, a, like a risk, posing a risk. But they'll say with COVID, be like, I'm healthy. I don't have symptoms. Okay. Right. But we still know that doesn't mean that you, yeah. you don't have COVID. <laughs> I, I just don't understand. <laughs> uh, it makes me wonder how much of this is just childlike stubbornness. Mm -hmm. of, I don't want to do what you're telling me to do. Yeah. yeah. And legitimately fear of a vaccine. I, I would mm -hmm. be willing to bet that the legitimate fear of the side effects of the vaccines are far less and than those that are like, I don't want to be told what to do. Yes. And I have, I have legitimate empathy for people who feel that way. I think that that's do your due diligence to like to question it to understand it of course any medical decision you're going to make or anything you're going to put in your body you should think and understand what it is and don't just you know right. do it because you were told but i and i think that that is um not i wouldn't say proven but it's it's demonstrated that a person who's vaccine hesitant or doubtful when they go and have a conversation with their doctor or a trusted medical professional who walks them through it and explains the science and helps them understand the risk versus benefit. It would never get this far. No, I, I'm saying for someone who has a legitimate a legit vaccine fear, gotcha. fear yeah. or hesitancy, yeah. talking to a medical professional and ha just learning and understanding and having the knowledge to make an informed decision usually makes the difference. That's not the case for people who they don't care about what the um, you know people who say I don't want it just because I don't want to be told what to do, not because of legitimate fear. It doesn't matter how much information they have. It doesn't matter whether or not they understand the science. Um, they just don't want to do it because just because. Yeah. And so, so I was just saying I have I have empathy for the people and I completely understand people who have fear or are hesitant to get the vaccine. I would just say it's worth it to try to get legitimate information to help you understand and make the best decision that you can. Yeah, and I I think what's being hidden here is I don't know how theme parks and shit are going to do this, but 
it if people are gonna let's just say Disney. I I don't see Disney doing this because I mean they are a cash cow. They do not care. They just want money. Well, Disney California, uh, Disneyland. I think they're already lifting their restrictions. And well, stuff. they closed for a long time. Yeah. Um, whereas Florida ha- Disney World has been uh, open for quite a while. So, you know. W- I think a big component of what we're missing here is that kids aren't going to be vaccinated at best until maybe this time next year, right? I'm saying yeah. all kids. Oh, right. It's not even going to start for really young kids. Right. Until... At this point yeah. next year, there's a good chance to say our child mm-hmm. who will be three at that point will have been vaccinated. Right. There's a good chance, but it probably won't happen until the beginning of next year. Right. Okay. So... I can see a private business saying she can't come in right now, because even though she's in it eligible, because we have to keep it uh, in line. I mean, uh, if we're talking about a baseball game, she can't come in. If we're saying you, you need a vaccine passport, yeah, but I think at some point it's weighing again. It's a, everything is a risk benefit analysis. Like I feel like, just like now, they don't. I mean, kids under two don't wear masks and okay, if they don't so, say they can't come into the the grocery store or the restaurant so here's where my dilemma why can't that ball field say you don't have a vaccine passport you have to wear a mask because it's the same thing right, right but they're not gonna if it's you really think that that person is going to keep their mask on the whole time they're in there who's going to enforce that if they see that person it's not walk in, I, i'm sorry it's the best and how we can are do. they going to have to wear something that identifies so them as an unvaccinated person then you can't bring a kid in no you but can't. that that's what i'm saying that's re- no because right now like i said kids can't wear masks kids really young kids that right? doesn't mean that they can't go anywhere why would that change because this is you can't make exceptions we just said we no, no, no. I didn't say you can't make exceptions. I don't think, I think there's a legitimate argument. If a kid is in school, if a kid's in daycare, if a kid is in camp, as a kid, if a kid is hanging out with other kids, right? We're talking a five, six, seven year old, not just our child who's two. I'm saying a five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten uh-huh. year old, whatever. And I want, say if our child was that old and we wanted to bring to a baseball game and there's a vaccine passport mandate issue. I think it would be for, for people aged like 12 and Why? over. COVID doesn't because care. There's no, but they, because you don't have a choice. You cannot get vaccinated if you are under 12 at, or if that's the age at that point. No, I, because there's also a lot of, um, as more and more people get vaccinated, they're finding, you know, they can tell the effects of how many, the percentage of the population who's vaccinated and its effect on the community spread. And we were reading about you know, trying to make decisions about our child interacting with other kids, even if all the adults in the households are vaccinated. And, you know, it seems to be that if all the adults in the household are vaccinated, the likelihood of that child having COVID is so decreased that it it's a risk benefit thing. I hear you, but I can I'm not see saying this. it's not zero. The risk is never going to be zero. I'm not saying that. I'm saying I can see this being a point of litigation saying, the virus does not care who it, where it where it resides. It does not care about the age of the person. It cares about spreading. That's okay, all. Okay, but so right now, if you went somewhere, you went to a restaurant, mm-hmm. and there was a child, a baby, who's not going to wear a mask, obviously. I'm saying a 10-year-old that hangs out with other kids that is in school, where there is spread in school. But you just said it doesn't school. matter the age. I'm saying by your logic, you're saying... Well, if a baby can't, because right now, or even before the vaccines were even a thing, before the vaccines were approved, so like last year, last summer, the only thing that you could base your level of risk on was whether or not a person you were interacting with was wearing a mask. There's no question of vaccination. So I'm saying, why don't, if you're going by your logic, then people who can't wear masks would have been not allowed into businesses. I I hear what you're saying. and. Because a baby won't wear a mask, a ten-year-old would. A but baby ten- isn't interacting in a classroom. A ten-year-old. They could be is. in daycare. Most babies aren't in a population of children in a daycare. This it's usually it's, it's not like thirty babies. Okay, it's like ten. Okay, th- but it's <laughs> ten unvaccinated, unmasked babies. My point is, 
when it comes to a 10 year old, it's, it, this person is able to be masked. Chances are he or she is in school or camp or in hanging out with other friends in groups larger than say three, four, five. But in the classroom now being only three feet apart, it's not six feet anymore. It's I know. three feet apart. And you're having at least 30 kids in that classroom because we're going towards a full learning experience now, full in person learning experience. I know. To me, that's no different than an office of 30 people. My it, point is you're at that point you're saying you're you're missing my point. You're discriminating against a child for something that is completely out of their control. If I if, hear you. if 10-year-olds are not eligible for vaccines, then how can you say sorry, you're not vaccinated? You can't because the, they don't have a choice. It's different for an adult who has a choice and is making that trade off. I don't have a choice where I'm not tall enough to ride a, a ride as a child. I don't have that choice. Yeah, but that's but, for your personal safety. And that's so not, is this. No, it's not. It's for the safety of other people. And you because okay. you aren't vaccinated. OK, I understand that. But what I'm saying is if the community. I'm just going to go back to risk benefit. If the community spread is really low, not saying we've necessarily reached herd immunity, but if the community spread is low enough that and the only unvaccinated people are going to be the the per, small percentage that are children, mm -hmm. I feel like that's not a cut and dry answer. That's a very But that's up to the to the ballpark owner. Yeah, I just if I feel like say, that would be really as a parent now, I'm like getting out of my like I try to usually look at this from like you do, like the virus doesn't care. Look at it scientifically, biologically, whatever. But as a parent, I don't like the idea of kids being having to be the only people wearing a mask. Like to me, that's so. Then, I don't know. Then it's, it's different when everybody too. is. Toss on a mask with your kid. Yeah, I, I would. If that was what was required of my kids, I would totally do that to it make wouldn't them feel be more a comfortable. requirement but yes it would yes. make them feel less outsider stigmatized yes, or i yeah. get it i get it but i'm sorry it the bottom line is the health it, bottom line is money so they don't want to get sued as a result they being the ballpark owners but they also don't want a mini spread in their ballpark they I don't want to be responsible for a child getting it and then getting miss c and then saying fuck we we shouldn't have let that child in we should have stuck to our guns and saying only those that are vaccinated again i'm sorry child i'm sorry but this is the way the world is right now i'm sorry you can't be vaccinated it's terrible. It, I don't, don't think that will ever happen. Uh, we'll see. But that to me, there, essentially, there's no difference in terms of the risk of spread. There is no difference between an unvaccinated 10-year-old and an unvaccinated 50-year-old. Right. But it's just like right now, you can't tell a family with a baby, you can't come in this establishment because your baby's not wearing a mask. It's exactly it. the same thing. I get it. But the, so it's the not going to happen. No, but the risk of the baby socializing and doing it's not these, the point. Eh, it's I not think the it point. Is. I think when you the older you get, the higher the risk is of contracting the virus because you're doing more. Obviously. But and, and they, we've also been told that kids don't really spread it to adults. They can spread it to each other, but they're not really the main source of spread to adults. Yeah. Which is like i can't understand the science behind well, that right now does, there but... is a, a a rumbling of a fourth wave amongst young people yeah yeah well i think when they say young people though they mean like 20s and 30s no they're saying they mean children yeah like 12 to 16 oh yeah i mean i can see they're that doing more yeah they're the ones in school and in sports and in bands saying. and yes so if yeah. there's a fourth wave among them i can see ballpark saying no you are the the demographic that are that's spreading this amongst each other no way no fucking way i don't know i don't think you can do that <laughs> i we'll see all right we've beaten this to death it's been about an hour is there anything else you want to bring up no I just think it's it's interesting to kind of bat this around because I know that there are plenty of other parents who are and I think we were we're actually talking about doing an, a separate episode specifically on parents and children decision yes. making around COVID with kids and when how we're, we're vaccinated right and making decisions yes. and trying to keep up with the guidelines and all the new data that's coming out so fast so we're trying to bring it back to the original theme right of the <laughs> involving parenting yes. but I think this was a, this kind of touched on it just about like what kids will be able to do since they'll be the last ones to get vaccinated right um so yeah uh, we obviously don't have completely full fully 
formed thoughts on this stuff. I don't think anybody does because it's it is a lot of gray area. Well, we'll see. Um, I I all intents and purposes, I am okay with the vaccine passport. Doesn't me bother me because I know I will be vaccinated. So I'm just like, it doesn't fucking affect me. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, well, gonna, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna go to this baseball game wow. while <laughs> you guys watch at home. Yeah, I'm not quite there. I am supportive of the vaccine passport when it comes to the bottom line. I think there are a lot of issues that need to be addressed, mostly oh, in the yes. equity L- Let me field. be clear. This is mostly against those that are anti-vax. I don't care. Yes. When it comes to the, I just don't want to because yes. of my freedoms yes. and can't articulate a legitimate reason, I don't really have empathy for that. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I feel bad for those that are unable to be vaccinated. And the challenges yes. that some people yes. face in getting it and all that. Yeah. I get it. But when it comes to the, uh, my freedom, no. Yeah. No sympathy. Anyways. All right. <laughs> So, I don't know what we're going to talk about next week, but we're keeping this shit strong. Uh, thank you for tuning in. If you liked what you've heard, please subscribe to us wherever you get your podcast fix from. We're on the Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, anywhere you get it. And if you're listening to us on Apple Podcasts, please take the time to give us five stars and a quick review. We'd really appreciate it. Um, if you don't have a, a platform to give reviews on, I know Spotify doesn't. Uh, there are a couple of others. I don't think Google does either. Uh, feel free to rate us on Facebook. Um, Facebook has a review system for a podcast um, on our page, and we'd appreciate it if you gave us five stars. And speaking of which, you can find us there. We're on Facebook at facebook.com slash while she's napping, on Instagram at while she's napping, on Twitter at she's napping pod, or you can email us at while she's napping at gmail.com. We got to get in touch with the, uh, the babes. Yeah, they'll be coming on soon. In the next couple of weeks, I think we said. All right. Yeah. Well, We'll, keep, we'll, we'll scheduling around naps yeah. and the time difference is and a second challenge. shots it's, yeah, yeah yeah yep yeah. but we'll, we'll yeah the babes will be on soon all right well until then uh we'll see you next week peace Bye.